Hi, this is John Willoughby, back with Section 3 of our Learning Kendo UI with jQuery series, in which we build a cryptocurrency dashboard app. In the first episode of this series, we gathered the project requirements and created the basic design of the app. In the second episode, we started coding and built the basic framework for the app. In this episode, we'll configure the data source for the grid and the chart. The grid for the dashboard will show a list of currencies with the currency label, the list price, and the volume. We'll be using the Kendo UI data source component for this. First, we need to define the transport option because we're using a remote data source. We'll be using the Cryptopia API to retrieve a list of alt currencies for a particular base currency. So let's first go back and take a quick look at what that API returns. We'll use the get markets option to call the API and let's specify BTC, which is Bitcoin. And this is what we get back. There's a series of listings here for a different alt currencies with a bunch of data. Okay, back to our code. Since we're making a GET request to this endpoint, we'll configure the transport.read option. If we were making a POST request, we'd configure transport.create. To make a PUT request, you configure transport.update. And to make a DELETE request, you configure transport.destroy. So inside transport.read, we specify the URL and the data type of the request. And here's what that looks like. This alone will not get us the data we need. It's a good start, but the response from the request returns an object with several attributes. Also, the data has several fields that we don't need for our grid. We need to extract the data from the response and save only the fields that we want to use. The schema is the configuration used to parse our response. There are two ways we can extract the data from our response. We can configure the schema.data option and specify the name of the field in the response that contains the data items. Alternately, we can use schema.parse to parse the response. We're going to use the latter method because we'll do some additional processing on the data to save certain fields. So remember the data that we saw returned from the API. Take a look at that here. Okay, notice how the label field is a trading pair. We only want the characters before the slash to appear for our label. And we see that all the numbers are being formatted in scientific notation. Cryptocurrencies are bought and sold in fractions. Hiding the digits hides important information and makes it difficult to compare data points. So we're gonna remedy this by setting the number of decimals to eight using JavaScript's two fixed method. So we add the schema section to our data source, and we split up the label using the slash character, and we fix the numbers for volume and price. Okay, that's the grid, now for the chart. The chart's gonna show price history for a trading pair during a certain period of time. Um, and again, let's take a quick look at the data that gets returned for a history call. So if we see here, we're gonna use the trading pair dash and USDT to build the data source. So the URL to retrieve the last 24 hours of market history looks like the following here. We use the get market history and dash underscore USDT that, that defines the trading pair. The Cryptopia API also lets us set the number of hours as a parameter. It's possible to set the hours in the URL, but we're gonna set it in the transport.data configuration. Our chart will allow users to select different time periods and we wanna update the request by changing the data parameter instead of having to change the URL. So this is the data source object that gets the market history for us. We specify the trading pair as part of the URL, and we set the number of hours as part of the data that's passed. We also added in a schema section here too to identify and process the info that we want to use. Looks pretty simple. One more thing, we need to get some min and max data, and we're going to use the aggregate function for that. Aggregate functions perform a calculation on a group of data items for a particular field and returns a single value. To create an aggregate, we have to add an aggregate array to the data source object. For each aggregate, you specify the field name and the aggregate function. The supported aggregate functions are count, average, min, max, and sum. Before we implement the aggregates, let's go back and take a quick peek at the data that's returned from the response. And it looks like this. So what we're going to want to do is get a count of all the items, and then we'll want to get the min, max, and average for the price. Uh, and lastly, we want to get a sum of the amounts, which is the volume. So we add the aggregates to the data source here. And there we go. So in this section, we set up the data source for the grid and the chart. We learned how to configure the transport object to get the data, parse the response with the scheme object, and perform aggregate calculations by configuring the aggregate option. In the next two sections of the series, we're going to actually use the data when we implement the grid and the chart. See you in the next section.